Hi guys, and welcome back to another art tutorial. Uh, today's tutorial is going to be your semi project called Contrast with Color. And what I would say is if you have a paper that has a tile already written on it, this is the back of the page. So you're going to be using this side. It's perfectly blank. So that way you don't go over your name or other things on it. So uh, before we get started, um, a couple things as to this project. When I came up with the watercolors, I didn't, I don't recall going through all the watercolors to make sure everybody had a black on theirs. Like, for example, my watercolor kit has a very dark violet, but it is not black. So if you have one like mine, most likely what you're going to do is use a violet or a blue to substitute a black. If you have a black in yours, great. But if you don't, you might want to use these. So. Let me show you an example of what I did with the high schoolers and what they did with their contrast with color because they were using acrylic paint, not watercolor, but it is the same idea behind it. So here is the high school version of contrast with color. Again, they did acrylic, not watercolor. So what we did was that we took our paper, we broke it up into four sections, at least I did, not everybody did, which is fine. And what they had to do was be mindful of black and white and making sure they had good spacing between them. And I used what's called a pop of color. So in this particular one, I used red. Now that doesn't mean that for yours, that you have to use it in one, like in each section. You can do whatever, guys. If you wanna use more color, that's fine. But in this case, I just wanted to kind of give you a visual of contrast. So. What we're going to do, I'm gonna bring the camera down and we're going to divide up our sections. We're gonna use pencils to kind of lightly draw our designs and then kind of figure out what colors we're working with, so. All right here. So as I said earlier, when the high schoolers did this project, it was acrylic paint. And of course they had, you know, black. We're using watercolors. And in my kit, unfortunately, I don't have black. So I'm gonna substitute using most likely violet, just to kind of substitute on that. So before we get all into the painting and stuff, like I said, we're going to use a pencil, we're gonna divide up our sections and do some designs. Now, since in this one I already did four, I think on this one I'm gonna purposely just do two so I can have a little bit more fun and work with the space. Because watercolor likes to bleed and I'm afraid that if I try to replicate something like this, it's gonna get real messy really quickly. So going to divide this up into two parts. It doesn't have to be perfectly in half, but this way we have two sections. So I have my lightly drawn line on here and I need to decide what colors I want to work with. If purple is my substitute for black and obviously white is the background of the paper, I need to come up with a color that will work well with it. Since in this one I used red, I think in this case I'm going to use a green because green and purple actually do work well together, truthfully. So again, before I start painting, I need to draw out my design. And the advantage of you drawing this before you start painting is so you can figure out your spacing. So I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna have some fun with some swirls and stuff since I can do a little bit more fun water themed with these colors. So let's see. Maybe I wanna do waves. And it doesn't have to be like perfectly symmetrical like these. If you want, go for it. I'm not gonna stop you, but I'm purposely just gonna have some fun with this. Okay, so on this, I just did these wavy lines. And what I can do is go back and decide what's white, what's black, and what's my pop of color. So I might do every other line is one of the three things I'm aiming for. So if it's white, I'm not gonna write anything in it. If it's black, I'm gonna put V, and then a G for green, white, V, G, white, V, and G. All right, so I already got that labeled out. 
it's very lightly written, but this way when I start painting, I know what I'm trying to do. So um, what I'm gonna do is just focus on this one. We'll come back over here in a little bit. So I got my water cup, my watercolors. I have a napkin or you can use a paper towel for this. And I think what I might do is start out with the green first, truthfully, instead of my darkest color, only because if my green blends into where I would have my dark color, when I put the dark color on, it'll blend out or hide it. So, get this. And for once, we might not get a cat cameo like we normally do because he's taking a nap under the coffee table, which is wonderful. Because then he's not making noises or yelling at us. Okay, like that. Just small one up here. And again, this doesn't have to be super perfect or anything, but again, it's that idea of working with contrast, specifically black and white, and a little bit of pop of color. Okay. So we got our green done. And now what I want to do is my violet, or if you have a black, use black. So let me get some of that. And if it bleeds a little bit into the other one, that's fine. And if you want to go back after this is dry, so let's say you don't have a black paint and you're using like violet or blue and it's not really dark, what you can do is as soon as this is like fully dry on here, you can do a second coat of color and that will actually make it really, really dark. Only reason I'm not trying to attempt super dark the first go round is because I want to get the area painted. All right, so it kind of reminds me of like seaweed or something or like kind of like a groovy design or something. I don't know, but this is our first contrast with watercolors. Again, the violet or if you use blue as a substitute for black. So again, if you want to go back over this and make it darker, wait for it to fully dry, add another layer or two on this. So. I'm going to move on to my second design on here while this is drying and stuff. And I'm trying to think of what I want to kind of do on this one. I think what I'm going to do is kind of like more uh, sharp edges, which is the opposite of what I did here. So I'm going to just get some thick stripes, put down. There we go. And just for fun, I'm going to make larger sections. 
because again, watercolors, it's really hard to get a nice sharp edge. So I'm purposely making bigger sections than I did with things like this. Okay. So maybe in this case, I'm going to use my blue again to substitute my black for this. And then the color I'm going to use is orange because Broncos, why not? Again, we're going to go through, figure out what's white, what's orange, what's black. So I think I just may go across very simply. Let's say these ones are going to be white. So I'm going to make these blue. These ones will be orange. Again, white. white here, orange, white, and blue. Again, I know this seems super tedious, but seriously, when you're painting and having fun, you will forget where to put your colors. So it's important that you do label them. So I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to paint this out. I might go back if this dries in time to do another layer of dark violet, but this way you can see what it looks like when we're contrasting. Okay, give me just a sec. All right, so I finished out my design on here and I actually went over the blue and orange several times just because I wanted to have more of a vibrant, solid look. So even though there are sections on here that are still wet, I did go over and finish this. I went back and made the violet more dark. So you really get that nice high contrast on here. And really, truthfully, what gives you a full, nice, rich contrast Yes, it's more like a solid color. Yes, it's your darks and lights, but most of all, it's your white, the areas you don't paint. That's what really makes areas pop, especially this diamond design. This I'm very proud of. It looks amazing. So, so we used watercolors and I had a lot of fun doing this truthfully. I'm kind of glad I substituted the black because I didn't have it in the first place to do blues and violets. I had a little bit more fun with my color comparing students on this. So one thing I will say, I know a lot of you will have like this little container of black paint in there and it's acrylic. Don't use it for this. That is specifically for your main project. Please don't use it. Like I said, if you don't already have watercolors that has a black in here, use the violet, use the blue. You get some really nice, rich contrast on here. But if you get stuck, again, ask me on our Zoom meetings, ask me during our, I guess, Schoology emails, those kind of things. I will be more than happy to assist you with this. So have fun. Again, if you ask any questions, I'll help, but I look forward to seeing you all next time. All right. Have a great day, guys. Bye.